Hi everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'm going to play another training game and I'm in the lobby trying to find uh, a higher rated opponent with a longer time control, uh, the same as I managed yesterday. So this is going to be the, the last training game recorded be before I uh, play the tournament. I'm traveling tomorrow and uh, the first game is played on Thursday. So yeah, uh, I hope I'm going to be able to record uh, the game videos while I'm there, but it's going to depend on, on a few things. Firstly, I'm staying at a hostel, so I'm not sure what the Wi-Fi connection will, will be like. And uh, secondly, I'm having uh, I'm playing two rounds every day, except on Thursday. Uh, Thursday is day one of the tournament, round one is played in the afternoon. And then on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, uh, the rounds will be double every day. And the first one is played at 9 a.m., the second one at uh, 2.30 p.m. So I definitely won't have enough time even to prepare or to have a normal meal in between rounds. Uh, and I hope I'm going to manage to, to record the games in the afternoon, in the evening, after the, the second game of the day. But it will depend on how much I have to prepare for my, op for, for my opponent the next day. So I can't really promise anything. It looks like there are no really good games. So I'm going to play a 15 plus 15 game, as I normally do. Uh, I wish I have a good game. I've been practicing a lot uh, the last few days and uh, I'm going to try. Well, unfortunately, this opponent is lower rated than I am, but what can you do? I cannot abort the game. Uh, the Nimtsovich opening. Well, uh, okay, I he can either play d5 or e5 here. Uh, I don't really like this opening. I end up having problems with f5. Uh, this I've never seen. I'm not sure what happens after e5, c4. Uh, his knight is going to end up on, <clears throat> on b6. Like in the Alakine defense. So e5, knight d5, c4, knight b6. And then knight f3 d5 because everything is defended so i'm going to play it it seems like it's gaining space i'm not sure if this is an opening variation or something but i'm not familiar with it so i'm just going to try to play sensible chess uh he can go knight uh, b4 but then i have a3 winning a piece so i'm just going to continue with my plan knight b6 knight f3 defending e5 and then sorry d5 it's going to be my move. I think he should play d6 here. That's probably his best option. Now we are in the Alakine after takes. But the problem is that I have my, my knight on f3. So this is kind of strange. In the Alakine, I don't usually develop my knight to f3 because uh, then he can develop his bishop with bishop g4. So now bishop g4 is coming. Uh, how do I defend c4? I might play b3, bishop b2. But then after d5, like in the normal Alakine defense, c5, my bishop is trapped. Uh, hmm. Maybe I should play h3. Yeah, he managed to get me into a bad Alakine for me because I have my knight on f3. Maybe I should just play d5 right away, uh, trying to double his pawns before he has time to play bishop g4. Because if I allow bishop g4, then d5 can be met with knight e5 and my knight is attacked twice. Uh, I doubt he's going to play knight b8. That just seems like a bad move. Uh, Knight b4 runs into a3, knight a5 runs into b5. And yeah, still my c4 pawn is attacked, but after knight a5 I could play... Um, I could play b3, the knight is misplaced. So I think d5, considering the circumstances, is a, is a good move. I 
I'm not sure though, as I said, I, I don't know the position and normally I prefer having my knight on e2 and my bishop on d3. So now I'm happy because after b3, bishop b2, he can no longer play d5 and this bishop will be a great piece. These knights aren't really doing much. Uh, the a5 knight is, well, pretty loose after bishop d2 or queen d2. If the other knight moves, uh, then I can play b4, simply winning the a5 knight. So I think he is in trouble, and I think d5 was the correct, the correct move. We will see though, I don't like my pawn structure, it's, it's overextended. Bishop g4 is still coming. But I'm not sure what he does after bishop d2. Yeah, now bishop d2, knight uh, moves, and then... Okay, bishop d2, uh, the b6 knight has to move either to d7 or to c8 to defend. And then, when I play b4, his knight uh, is under attack and he does, he doesn't have any squares. So I think th this is a good plan. I'm not sure... I'm not sure, but I think he might be losing a piece already. Yeah, now b4 should win the knight. b4, he can take on c4, but that's just a piece for a pawn. Yeah, I, I, I don't see... Any problems with this? I think I'm just winning a piece. I did give him e5 for his knight, but I'm piece up. Yeah, it seems that he didn't enter the Alakine voluntarily, and uh, I guess uh, I guess it wasn't such a big deal that my knight was on f3. So okay, he's attacking my knight twice, I have to retreat my bishop to defend everything. Uh, I'm going to take with the bishop, he does have a check here, but... Okay, wait, let's think. Uh, bishop takes, knight d3 check, king to f1. Can he do anything? No, not really, I mean, maybe I should take with the pawn, but... Yeah, maybe I should take with the pawn. I, do, I don't want to allow his knight into the game. And I can then play f4, chasing the knight away. <clears throat> and my bishop can check on b5. That That's a good thing. Forcing a trade. Actually, after, after f4, I'm threatening winning the queen. And... Uh, yeah, now he, he made a square for his king. But after f4, the knight is going to have to move here. And then this check should at least misplace the king. Uh, check king e7. Yeah, and I'm going to open the position up. I, I think this is this is just good for me. And now I think f5 should be correct. He has to take and then queen e2 check. King f6, bishop c3 check. Almost game over. He can cover with knight e5, yeah. I, I don't think this is a good move because now I... I can play f4. He doesn't have a check, all the squares are covered. 
he needs to go back here. Yeah, uh, I'm going to try to open things up as much as possible. He has a check here now, but if he moves the king to e8, then the knight is pinned, so he has to capture, capture, move the knight. <clears throat> Oof, he took with the king, that's brave. Uh, how do I check him? So check here, forcing the king back but cutting it off from f7. That seems like a good idea. He has a check here. So I think I have to force the king back. Okay, I'm going to check here. King e7 has to be played. And then I'm going to castle, because his queen is blocked. And play rook e1 check. Probably winning the game. Yeah, uh, that's winning the bishop, and I missed that. Oh no, it, it's not. Yeah, I, I, I saved my position because I have a check with the queen. But this is embarrassing. I, I perhaps casting wasn't the best move. Maybe uh, king somewhere was better. But yeah, so now I'm, I'm just a piece up. I should have thought more. I usually mess up when I'm winning because I don't look for the best move. I just play automatically. This was a mistake. But still, I have an extra bishop, so it should be fine. Let's just develop all of my pieces. Knight c3, rook c8, uh, bishop d4 is my idea. I want to open up the e-file anyway. Yeah, and he's for now playing two pieces down, basically, so you could argue that I'm a bishop and rook up, because it's going to take him time to, to get the rook out. Still allowing that check was bad, I should have checkmated him and not, not uh, be forced to trade off the queens, so I'm not happy about that. Okay, attacks my bishop. Uh, let's check which rook do I want to use. Uh, maybe I should transfer my, my bishop here. That seems like a good idea before I check, because then uh, he might not play king f7. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do that. Seems trickier for him, because that cuts the king off from these two squares and it also uh, doesn't force him to play king f7 so now if rook e1 check king f7 bishop b3 should be over and if he stays in the center then I'm better so I might even play the f rook to e1 because he cannot go to f7 so that I can keep my a rook for coming uh, in along the c file Yeah, so now check, uh, and he has to move back to one of these two squares, and then bishop b3. So I'm going to be controlling a lot of squares. Yeah, now bishop b3 actually threatens uh, bishop e6, so he has to react, has to move the rook or the king once again.
Yeah, not not much to say about this position. I mean, it's it's just winning. Uh, missed bishop e uh, bishop e six. Yeah, and I win the bishop as well. So uh, this this game was short. So I'm going to play another one. Uh, hopefully, I will get a higher rated opponent. And uh, okay, let's let's get another game in. I usually let's check out the lobby. Maybe there are some good games here. Twenty plus zero, sixty minutes. Uh, what's this? Three quarters of a minute. That's insane. Uh, yeah, looks like there are no high-rated games. So another fifteen plus fifteen game. Okay, I'm black now, and my opponent is sixteen hundred, but he has a question mark next to his name, so. Uh, I guess uh, he just started the account, so he might not be 1600. Playing the Karo Khan. Yeah, the, the last game, I mean, he just missed that I win a piece. What can you do? So D takes C, Knight takes C. I'm going to play. Uh, what am I going to play? I'll play the Karpov. I like playing the Karpov. Okay, the best move, knight f3, takes, takes. If he plays bishop d3, yeah, this is a mistake, because now I can uh, gain a tempo on his bishop with my knight and pin his knight with my bishop. So now I got everything I wanted. I'm going to close the structure down with a6, and this is equal for black, believe it or not. That's why bishop d3 is such a huge mistake. He should take take, and this doesn't allow me to to pin the to pin the bishop to pin the knight. Now there's a constant question whether bishop d6 or bishop e7 is better. And basically, if I play bishop d6, he's going to play bishop uh, g5. If I play bishop e7, he's going to play bishop f4. So no good options really. I prefer bishop e7 and now bishop f4, but both are okay, I guess. Castles, uh, yeah, he's a good player. This is all just probably okay. Bishop d3 was the only mistake he made. So as I said, black is equal, but uh, yeah, he, he's playing well. This I have to take, don't want to lose my bishop. If he takes with the queen, I can play c5 immediately. I can play c5 anyway, but if he takes with the queen, it's better. Have to open up the position. Basically, in the Karo Khan, uh, when you play c5, it's great. So now I'm going to isolate his pawn, which is uh, ideal almost, and put my knight on d5. So when your opponent has an isolated pawn, you have to blockade it. Uh, so this is the most sensible way to play. Uh, his bishop is coming in here, perhaps, but my knight is covering that, so I guess uh, rook to c8 is a normal move. Maybe knight here, knight here, uh, but it's covered for now perfectly. This is going to be, uh, well, probably a long game, but I'm always going to have the advantage because he has the isolated pawn. Now I should really be careful if I play queen b6, then he has knight to d7, and I have to connect my rooks. <coughs> so the correct move really doesn't exist. I've had this position before. If I play queen, queen d6, then knight c4, because it's now uh, defended twice. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I actually promised myself I was going to look at uh, this exact position, and I forgot to. So it's good that I that I'm playing this at the moment. Yeah, his knight is a real pain in my position. So 
So I'm looking at bishop d6, uh, but after bishop d6, rook takes, rook takes, uh, rook to c1, queen to d7, and the problem is that still, even if I manage to get queen f6 in, he's still threatening knight d7. So yeah, I'm not too happy. <laughs> Also looking at knight b4. Uh, seems like a good move attacking both the pawn and the queen. If he moves the queen to b3, then I have queen takes here. Removing the defender of the knight and attacking the bishop. But then he can take. Hmm. He can first take with the bishop. I'm not sure. Uh, This is actually a great training position. <clears throat> Maybe queen d6, uh, knight c4, queen a6, threatening the pawn and pinning the knight to his queen could be a good plan, so I think I'm going to play that queen d6, knight c4, queen a6, seems okay. I really want to connect my rooks. So now he's threatening bishop h6. Uh, so I think bishop f6 is the correct move. Uh, there are no discoveries with the knight winning my queen, so I can undefend it. And bishop f6 is more active because my bishop is better on f6. So I'm just going to play that. Uh, <clears throat> Any knight g4 now, uh, I can just take on d4. And take the queen, yeah, uh, just take the queen. I think knight e7 is a good move, and with a plan of knight g6 defending my entire king side, because then d4 is going to be under pressure. So yeah, I, I like knight e7. Knight e7, what does he do? He can play bishop here. Uh, Yeah, bishop f4 is annoying. Knight e7, bishop f4, but I have a knight f5, which should be fine. Knight e7, bishop f4, knight f5. Uh, Hmm. I'm going to play it. I'm, I'm not sure because it's uh, making my position very loose. Uh, but I think it's fine. I can never take on d4 because rook here and after I move my queen, the knight here wins the exchange because the bishop is undefended, the pawn is pinned. So I need to be careful about knight d7 still. So if the bishop moves to f4, I cannot take d4, because rook uh, c to d1, and yeah, take on b2, knight d7, game over.
But after knight f5, uh, I always have queen e7, defending everything, defending the bishop, preventing knight d7. I think bishop f4 is his best move. <clears throat> I don't think he should be exchanging groups. Uh, I don't see any other move. b4 makes sense, but then knight f5 is coming. Bishop f4, knight f5, if the knight moves, I take the queen. If the queen moves, uh, I think I can take on d4 with the queen, threatening to, to take the knight. And then if, uh, if rook d1, uh, I'm not sure. It's a complicated position, might not look that way, but it's it's complicated. I did manage to create the, the pawn weakness on d4, but still I'm a long way from exploiting that it's it would be best felt in the end game for him and for now for now there are still too many pieces on the board for, for that to have any effect. What else can he do if not bishop f4? I'm threatening the pawn, I'm threatening knight f5. He can move the queen, but depending on where he moves it, I might even play rook takes c1 and then have a pawn on e5. Unless he recaptures with the bishop. Yeah, it's, it's hypothetical scenarios. And this is the first time he's thinking, so... Queen f4. Queen f4. What's queen f4? Ah, so if I play knight g6, he's going to take with the knight and his queen is defended. So, okay. Uh, fine. But what about knight c6? I think knight c6 is a better option there. Because if knight here he can take, his queen is defended, and if knight here knight takes, I can take the queen, and he cannot recapture with the knight, his knight is still hanging. Might even recapture with the rook. So knight c6, knight takes, rook takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook c7, rook takes. Or bishop takes. Or rook b b six. So I think knight c six is a good move. Going back to d five, I don't really want to do. So knight c six, knight takes. Knight c six, knight takes c six, 
queen takes queen, bishop takes queen, rook takes c6, or knight c6, knight takes c6, pawn takes c6, stopping d5, but I lose my queen. So knight c6, queen takes queen, bishop takes queen, rook takes c6, rook takes c6. I'm going to have an isolated, isolated pawn on c6, but I'm putting pressure on d4 and on b2, which he can defend with bishop c3, but then rook to d8. So I'm going to go for that, uh, seems like a good move. Now I'm also threatening to take on d4. I will have an isolated c6 pawn, but he has two pawns on dark squares which are really weak and hard to defend. And then my bishop will finally be better than his on f6 if uh, the knight moves. And now I will, I will finally move the knight away. And in many variations, the, D, the d4 pawn is hanging, so I think he has to take on c6, otherwise uh, I guess I can take on d4. If the queens are off the board and he gets in knight d7, just rook d8, I don't really care about him doubling my pawns. I can play f5, block out the bishop, and yeah, it should be fine. So I've been trying to find uh, chess audiobooks for uh, for the trip tomorrow because I'm traveling by bus and there aren't any. I realized that you can't really put notation in an audiobook, but I was at least looking forward to some biographies or, I don't know, some games uh, which don't cover moves, just talk about some world champion or something, but I really couldn't find anything, so I was disappointed. If you know anything about chess audiobooks, please let me know, because I listen to them every day. I mean, not chess audiobooks, but audiobooks, and I wanted to find the chess one. So yeah, knight c6 makes a lot of sense. He was also... Uh... Wait, did I just miss something? On the last move... I played knight e7, which was correct, which I saw that he could play bishop b4, grabbing the exchange, but after knight c6... Yeah, and then I was covering bishop b4 once again, so, okay. Okay. So now do I give up my bishop? I guess I shouldn't, but if I give up my bishop, then his bishop is going to be blocked out of the game. Which seems nice, but I don't really like my knight. Hmm... Maybe just rook f to d8, putting some pressure on the d4 weakness, and whatever happens, that should be a good move. And getting away from bishop b4, finally. But that makes my bishop unable to move because of f7. Uh, I guess that's not such a big deal. This way I'm finally covering d7 for the knight, and I'm defending my queen. I'm putting pressure on d4, and I'm getting away from bishop b4. So definitely a multi-purpose move. <clears throat> so
So now bringing my knight back to d5 makes sense. What's going on? Uh, my Firefox is not responding. What? Look at this, my, my time froze. Damn, what do I do now? What do I do now? Can I... Yeah, I have no idea what to do. My, my Mozilla Firefox froze. That's what you get for using Firefox. I'm not sure what to do. Perhaps I have to restart the browser or something. Hmm. I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm going to try to restart Mozilla and see what happens. Okay, so let me try again. <clears throat> I'm sorry about this. I hope I'm still going to have my game. Okay, my game is back. Yeah, but something weird is going on. No, come on. Okay. I have no idea what happened, sorry about that, but uh, got the browser back open. Okay, so he played uh, rook c to d1. Bishop b4 still worries me. Uh, so I think b6, a5 is a good plan, grabbing space and uh, trying to stop any bishop before in the future okay uh this i think is fine now i'm just going to play uh b4 b5 and now he can never get his bishop here so i'm happy now my plan is knight back to d5, and uh, this bishop is going to be a bad piece, because I will not allow d5. So I'm happy now, his bishop really only has this diagonal now, which isn't that scary with my bishop on f6. I did undefend my knight, but it's defended twice, so it doesn't really matter. I would love to get my knight into c4, but uh, that doesn't seem possible. Okay, attacking my knight again. So yeah, I think knight e7, knight d5. Uh, he did defend his bishop now. So, knight e7 seems like a good move into knight d5, and his bishop has to move. My rook is going to infiltrate the position. I really want to get my rook into c2. I need to keep in mind that queen e2, for now, is impossible because the bishop is undefended, but later on he might put pressure on b5. So I need to remember to play a6 at some point. And now I bet he wishes his rook was still on c1. I'm not sure what he should do now. I think I'm better here. 
once I get my knight into d5, chase the bishop away. Uh, okay, he is attacking f7, but is that really checkmate? Because the bishop is hanging. So, okay, rook takes bishop, queen f7, king h8. So what? He gets a pawn. Oh, he can take here with the rook. No, he cannot because the knight is still here. Stupid me. He can grab the exchange with knight f7, but... Okay, rook c3, queen f7, king h8. Uh, then he moves the queen, threatens knight f7, winning my queen. What if I just play g6 here? Oh, he has queen f3 attacking the bishop. Okay. Uh... Hmm. I'm going to try to be exact now, uh, because it seems like this is the critical position. So let's assume I take on c3. If knight takes f7, I have to move my queen. And I'm going to move my queen to d5. Threatening to trade off queens and winning the knight. So, knight takes f7 isn't possible. Rook c3, queen takes f7, check. King h8 is forced. And now, he moves the queen away. And threatens knight f7. But I think I can cover that with knight g6. Because then my king is defending f7. Queen f7 check, king h8. Queen... Does he have any tricks with queen checks? I don't think he does. Queen f7, king h8. Uh, the queen only has... two squares. One square. The queen has to go back to h5. And then after queen h5... I can just play knight g6 and I, I don't care about that position. I don't think he has anything. Rook c3, queen f7, king h8, queen h5, he has nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain he has nothing. Yeah, I'm going to take. I, I don't see it. I don't see the attack. And as I said, knight f7 threatening to win the exchange doesn't really work because of queen d5. And he has to exchange the queens and they recapture with the rook. If he wants to justify the sacrifice, he, he has to take, but I think this was the, a mistake. I think now after queen d5, uh, his game is just busted, because he cannot keep the defense of the knight and... Uh, and defend the queen, he has to take. Otherwise, I, I just take on f7. He can check me on h6, but... I will just take that. <clears throat> so I think... I think queen h5 was a bad mistake. And he didn't calculate it long enough. He he took probably one minute to, to play queen h5.
Yeah, uh, he has to take. He has to take. I don't know what's he thinking. What he's thinking about, but Queen D5 is the only move. If Knight H6, G H6, Queen H6, I'm just going to play Queen G5 and two pieces up and forcing an exchange of queens. Yeah, okay, uh, <clears throat> so I, I'm not saying I'm going to win, but I'm a piece up and it should be fine. So two games in which my opponents, one of them, uh, well, hung a piece, one of them sort of sacrificed it. I wasn't really looking forward to games like that, I wanted to play positional games. And this game was tricky at one point uh, before I played Queen d6. Then I was always threatened with bishop b4 and stuff like that, but uh, turned out okay. I think I, b6 and b5 were good moves and I managed to lock down the queen side to my advantage. Transferring the knight back to d5 uh, or threatening to, it didn't happen. And then he went in for this strange queen h5 sacrifice, which I think taking, taking with the queen was better objectively, but still, uh, still a bad move. I never take sacrifices lightly, and perhaps that's why I don't play them enough, but uh, I think it's more important uh, to know that the sacrifices you play are good than to then it's uh, then it is a bad thing to not to play sacrifices when they are correct. So I would rather be a player who doesn't sacrifice when it's correct than who sacrifices when it isn't. Yeah, he went in for that, but as I said, uh, after Queen G5, uh, there's nothing there. If he doesn't take on H6, I'm still going to play Queen G5 and threaten Rook takes H3. Yeah, that's, that's not a good position, two pieces down. And I don't think he has any other <laughs> moves to, to try to mess things up. I think knight h6 was the last one. Yeah, this should be over. So cross your fingers for Thursday. I'm going to be playing uh, a very strong Fide Master. Uh, so okay, what do I cover? If Queen G5 now, Queen takes E6. So not that. Uh, maybe Knight covers. Maybe just move the King. Yeah, I'm just going to move the King to defend my E6 pawn. If he plays, uh, yeah, but then check and this pawn is hanging. So, okay, let's not mess this up. Uh, I don't want to lose the e6 pawn. Oh, he, he doesn't have a check because my queen is covering. I'm a moron. Okay. I missed that my queen is covering h5. So anyway, on Thursday, I'm playing uh, 23 something Fide Master, most likely. Uh, and it's going to be a tough game. I was looking at what uh, every possible opponent plays. I've been preparing for about five days now. Uh, I'm going to be preparing some more today. And when I ar arrive uh, tomorrow, I'm going to be preparing uh, the whole day. So I'm co hoping that... Uh, so I'm hoping that I'm going to prepare well. Queen g5 now, everything is covered, he doesn't have any squares, so Queen g5 threatening rook h3. He can play, no, he, he can play queen e4, threatening e6, but then just rook d6, and that should finally be it. No more threats.
yeah, this loses the queen, my friend. So, okay. Uh, so, cross your fingers for Thursday. Uh, I'm definitely going to be recording the video on the first night, uh, if I have an internet connection. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it will be a tough game. I'm not expecting to win, but I'm going to uh, play as if I'm going to win because it doesn't make sense to to play like you're an inf inferior player even though he is a FIDE master or she uh, and yeah uh, wish me good luck thanks very much for the support and making the tournament possible let me know what you think about the games they weren't that great but still it's good to get some training games in uh, thank you very much for watching uh, see you on Thursday evening and stay tuned for more chess bye bye thank you